Kelly from IDC coming on. Cube alumni coming in again. We had her at HP Discover. Um, we are down to the final stretch here at our special coverage of Moonshot HP's big announcement today. Michelle, welcome to the Cube How are again. You? Good Great to, to see, see you again. Step up to the microphone. How How's you doing? that? Good, Dave. How are you? Good to you? see you. I gotta, we Good got to, to come you. to California. To I know. It's crazy, there. right? <laughs> How did you even get here? Do you have any power? No. Left left Deb and the kids with a generator Good going. Good stuff. And a bunch of gasoline. Me too. <laughs> 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 You're out of power as well? Uh, actually, we have power. We're lucky this time. You know, Chandra Khan was just talking about power and how to harvest it from yes. the crops. Yes, yes. Um, we were talking to something. Angelina about uh, how much water you save with these new washing machines. Well, so when you're out of power and you, you get your water <laughs> from a well, you, know, <laughs> you get out. <laughs> If you want to flush the toilet? Wow. It <laughs> takes a lot of water to flush the toilet. Believe me. That's true. Okay. We are here inside the Cube. I'm John Furrier with my co-host. Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here with Michelle Bailey of IDC, Vice President and, uh, and, and Guru of the Server Marketplace. And uh, pretty interesting announcements today, Michelle. I'm very excited about you know, getting your take on this and uh, figuring out what it all means. You were one of the first to really quantify the energy problem. In fact, all that Department of Energy data really comes from IDC data. Mm -hmm. And if it comes from IDC data, we know where it comes from. It comes from, <laughs> <laughs> from your laptop. So, <laughs> So take us back to some of the early studies that you did where you predicted basically that from an operation cost standpoint, energy costs were going to out outpace uh, any other cost in terms yeah. of to total cost of ownership. Right? Yeah. That was like several years ago you predicted that. Yeah, we did that study back in 2007. And, of course, at the time, the server installed base was growing at an exponential rate. And, uh, you know, much has happened since then, of course. We've gone through a lot of consolidation and virtualization has really taken hold and it's really helped to level out what was becoming an enormous problem for the data center market. And um, so at the time, you know, uh, roughly... The crappy demand uh, helped with the problem. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> partly. Well, so you think about where the market has been, right? And um, the x86 market, as it evolved, it became um, unmanaged, basically. And it was just growing uh, completely... Um, uh, along with the demand around processing. So um, what we were predicting at the time is if the market had kept going the way it was, was that we'd be out of power. I mean, the data centers wouldn't be able to continue to grow. That, you know, fundamentally in the U.S., you'd see constraints around businesses, and that's very much what was happening. We had a lot of enterprise customers who were out of power, out of space, um, and were unable to continue to grow their business. And so when you think about uh, how much of enterprise businesses today depend on IT, I mean, it is the business for, for many of the large financial companies, for example, even manufacturing now, you think about um, what have been sort of traditionally um, sort of bit-based industries, if you will. So fortunately, um, there was a lot of really great technology that came along over the last five years. It was really, again, a perfect storm. Um, virtualization came along at just the right time. And um, again, a really good technology worked well and it enabled a lot of consolidation. But, you know, we're, we're in this really interesting period where um, the x86 market is maturing. You're starting to see... Um, Lots of really great technology come out around the x86 platform, around management and networking, and you know a lot of all these new fabrics that you're seeing coming out are very much built around that technology. Um, so the market's ready for a new disruption, right? We see this every 10 or 15 years, and um, we've sort of been waiting for something like this, and that's why there's so much interest being paid to the announcement today because it feels like the time is right. For well, so this. x86 has what do you figure, say 97 percent of the, the the marketplace for server at, at servers? least. I mean, Right. Huge, it, right, it is it is the market, right? So, yeah. it, you know, I think what's really interesting is the parallel here where you look back when x86 really took hold in the mid-'90s, you know, that was a chip that came out of PCs and was running toys, we all remember. toys we, we right? Yeah, and was yeah, running yeah. consumer applications yeah. and made its way into the data center and became a robust operating system as well around x86 servers, and it became serverized, and it had all the things you needed like I.O. and ECC memory and all those kind of good things, and... I think we're seeing a lot of parallels today around this new technology. Yeah, so, uh, you know, people have been very careful today about making bold predictions about, y you know, that this is going to take over the data center. But, but um, if you use that PC analogy back then, I mean, who really would have predicted that Intel would have had 97% of the server market? I think nobody. Um, so today, you, you do a lot of work on workloads and, and use cases. So today it's, I don't know, what percent of the market are even candidates for these low-power 
Microphone well, system. not a lot today, right? Um, so less than 10%? Or? Um, maybe even a little less than that. But, you know, I think what we have to keep in mind is this is not really about today's applications. It's about the techni- the applications for the future, but right? there is demand, though, today. I mean, you're seeing specific use cases like big data and cloud. Absolutely, the right? And these are, these are really the applications where I'm thinking of as being future applications. So, I mean, it's so exciting what you're seeing going on around big data um, and even around convergence, right? You're seeing all of these very large specialized systems being built um, to take on these very large workloads at the top end of x86. So what's fascinating about the, the point of time that we're in right now is we're seeing maturity and a lot of excitement around the evolution of a, of a market that's been around for a long time. And at the same time, we're seeing these disruptive new products come along um, that make us think about a very, very different future, right? And so it really does feel like this next wave or this next business cycle of IT is what we really call it. Yeah, we're going to be at Hadoop World next week with theCUBE. Right. You know, I don't know if you're going to be down there. I won't be at Hadoop uh, World. Too bad, because we would have you, you on again. I'll be watching you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, the question then is, are these new emerging applications, are they outliers? Are they sort of the lunatic fringe, or are they harbinger of the future of the data center? Uh, I think it's the future, right? I think that... Um, uh, if you look at the, our generation and the amount of data that we've created, a lot of it fairly useless right now because we don't do any analytics on it, right? We don't really harvest it. It just becomes a lot of very static data. And I think that um, if you look to the future and, and where the excitement is, it's around taking all of that data that we've created and being able to do analytics on that data and using IT in a very, very different way from how we've been really using it in the last 15 years. Are people talking about monetizing that data? Um, I mean, we're talking about it. But I think customers? it's already being monetized, yeah. right? I mean, look at Facebook, for example. Look at Google, for example. I mean, they're absolutely LinkedIn, monetizing right? that data. I mean, what do you think their market cap is? It's not my daughter's <laughs> So, So then <laughs> the follow-up question, then, is that the future competitive advantage in our business? Well, I think so. I mean, I think that we've seen it. Faster CPUs. I mean, come on. Right? Well, I think that, you know, we've seen it for a long time in the enterprise, right? I think we've seen it in the financial industry particularly. And um, I think that that's, you know, you think about a lot of all these new markets around retail, for example, and um, understanding supply chains. And um, I think one of the first examples we've actually seen is in the data center itself, being able to take a lot of information about uh, systems in the data center and doing analytics on that and creating better data center footprint out of it. I mean, you see it again and again, I think, in, in many different ways. So what about that? We, we love to talk about horses on the track, and we were at Open World, Oracle Open World, about a month ago, and, and David had us. We had the we had the you know future of the data center. We had a micro- lot yeah. of microprocessors. Oh. We had oh, we secretariat <laughs> winning by 31 <laughs> lengths. That was the x86, right? I that was had, Intel. We said Intel's we had Intel. We had you know IBM Power and Titanium sort of you know yeah. way back in the pack. And then David made us put ARM yeah. in the race. Yeah, good. And a little full, right? And Smart said, man. Trust me, it's going to be in the data center. Right. So, so um, that was good. Good call. Good prediction. But. And we had Pauline Niston from Intel asked mm-hmm. her about ARM, and she said, "Well, we have Atom, mm-hmm. um, but you know, you don't see Atom at this announcement mm-hmm. today. You see you know, ARM and mm-hmm. Calzada. And what do you, what's your take on that? Where's where's Intel in all of this? Um, I think that they're going to be a formidable player here. I mean, I think that this is probably going to force them to make um, some pretty significant announcements around Atom. I would believe. Um, you can't just say it's going to be ARM, right? There's uh, Disruption can come from anywhere, and it can be all range of different products. And early on in disruptive markets, you see a pretty lengthy battle usually over different technologies. So uh, absolutely, they're a player, and there's no doubt about it. A lot of cash, a lot of revenue, a lot of A lot of ability ecosystem. to make a lot of semi So you think they can – so, so we, we can agree that, that ARM has a lead today. I don't know. If you can care to quantify that lead, do you have any sense of it? I have not quantified that today. Yeah. I'll get on that for you next week. Well, but maybe um, David Flores in the audience. We could ask him. He could David might know. What do you think the the lead is? Um, eighteen months, twenty four months. Or? We just want a quick answer. Yeah, yeah we don't need you to come on the queue. <laughs> Stay where you are. <laughs> you think eighteen months? And it's, it's much more driven by ARM and the volume they've got in the mobile. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So going back to your issue about consumerization. Yeah. ARM is driving that. Mobile is now more greater than the number. So, of so, so 18 months. 18 months. 18 months. That's good. The volume that's coming from mobile is really the ace in the hole that, that ARM has. And, and that's a challenge. Right. That so Intel has to repeat that. Has to, um, has to get both parts of that. And that doesn't come from x86. Of course, they got a lot of. They got a big war chest that they can use to subsidize this. Uh, oh, uh, DOJ might be watching. Hold on. Be careful. They but. Uh, 
could even buy some of these players to get in and accelerate. So that 18-month lead, that's, that's yeah. not, you know, well, insurmountable, it's, is it? It's significant, Let's assume it's significant it's, enough. I mean, yeah. do, getting deals done and getting product to the market, it could be green. So it's interesting times, surface. right? And now, the, now HP right. is, is leading the charge here. No longer do you, do you, you know, just innovate with microprocessors and operating systems, right? Um, what do you, what's your take there? I mean, uh, you know, HP's first. Right. What what does that mean? Um, is that just continued server lead? I mean, they're number one in servers, but but how important is that that being first? And how are they adding value beyond the microprocessor and the operating system? Yeah, I mean, I think what you saw a lot in the announcement today was, um, you know, a server is not just a server anymore. Right? There's a network fabric involved there. There's a management chip involved in that server. Um, it becomes a much more holistic system. You can start to even think about impacting many, many adjacent technologies in the data center, particularly networking, um, innovations around memory, right? So um, I think you need to keep in mind, you know, the types the types of applications that are going to be written to this new type of capability. It's not going to be everything in the enterprise data center. You're going to be looking at um, things that are typically I.O. constrained or memory constrained, right, where you can have more of a um, parallel processing capabilities um, take hold there. And that's not every enterprise application today. Are you, are you tracking the app impact to this? I mean, obviously, one thing we've heard on the, the IT consumerization trend is you got all these kind of Ruby framework type developers that Absolutely. aren't really hardware geeks. Yeah. So what's the impact to that big spend that's going on on the app side? Everyone wants an app store for the enterprise. We heard SAP talking about it, uh, others, and now they got homegrown apps. So they do it internally. Do they outsource it? Kind of these new dynamics. What's your angle on that? So this is what, you know, I think is interesting about HP's announcement and any other announcements we're going to see here is that you've got this whole um, new revolution of application development taking place at the same time you're seeing a lot of the change in the systems come to market. And um, if you really look at a lot of the new applications that are being built out there on these new frameworks, they're actually ripe for more of these parallel types of technologies. So, you know, again, it's this perfect storm of a change in application development along with the change in the systems could really lead to a very, very different data center future than what we see today. Um, at the same time, you know, everybody's got 30 years invested in what's going on in the enterprise data center. There's a lot of and rip and replace coming down the pike, don't well, you think? Well, um, rip and replace takes a long time, right? So again, it's another 10, 15 year cycle and we're at year one or yeah. 18 months, like as David server, might say. To go back to the, our PC analogy, we talk about PC spun the Wintel server and, you know, it's laughed at. Oh, it's, you know, who's going to file sharing? Big deal. That morphed into Blades, right? So here we got mobile driving now this product. So it's massive. Absolutely. And, you know, if you think about um, a lot of these mobile applications are, are written on an ARM platform as well, right? So that has a very big impact there. Yeah, cord, code portability. Absolutely. Here, open source. Yep. Hadoop, for example. Absolutely. Fastest growing Apache project yep. ever. Yep. Um, I mean, it's just, it's fantastic what's going on in the market. So you've got to think about, you know, it's not just these large providers that are building these applications. You know, if you think about what the impact is on the enterprise data center, um, there would be a lot of rewrite that would have to be involved in going back to some of those um, legacy applications. This is really much more about, you know, if I want Hadoop within my own data center, perhaps this is something I think about rather than a traditional platform. So I wonder, I wonder if we can go back to the horses on the track because we love to talk about <laughs> I know nothing about horse racing, but so, go ahead. Um, so <laughs> HP's got uh, the leading share of the server market, about a third, 30%. Is that about right? Yeah, they're usually in a pretty tight race with Dell, the other horse in the race. Yeah, so Dell, IBM, Oracle, do we, I guess Cisco's on the track, right? Um, they're they're panic, definitely anyway. on the track. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are the – so, again, in this world of you don't necessarily have to own the operating system or own the microprocessor, what are the characteristics that have allowed HP, really without ownership of those core elements, even though it's got some sort of uh, – what are the elements or the, the characteristics that have allowed them to achieve that 30%, that lead, and, and, and how do you see that shaping up going forward? What are going to be the attributes that determine success and, and, and leadership – in the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, in terms of their lead, um, they were aggressive in the market for a very, very long time, right? And they were very, very competitive, particularly against Dell in the x86 marketplace. And, um, you know, I think you saw a, sh a shift in, um, or a mind shift, if you will, around HP, where they were the kinder, gentler company, and then they became pretty aggressive and really drove a leadership position in terms of the number of shipments that went into the data center. Um, and I think you've also seen that they've made a number of acquisitions um, over the years as well that have done very well for them, um, mainly around the system space. 
Um, so particularly around their storage environment, being able to integrate their storage and now their networking environment as well. I mean, that's really, I think, um, changed things for them. So that system view, actually, the, the, the whole converged infrastructure. Well, you know, converged piece. is, again, really the maturity of the x86 platform. And if they hadn't done a lot of those things, they wouldn't have evolved along with the market. And um, so it was actually very necessary, so a lot of those moves that they... Advantage. Absolutely, competitive advantage in the marketplace. And um, and you're seeing a lot of the other vendors in the marketplace do similar things, right? So Oracle, for example, is a, um, another great example. Dell is making a lot of these acquisitions as well. Um, but that's about maturity or evolution, right? This new disruption, this is something entirely different. This is going off on a completely different plane and starting again. Um, so they've got to be very careful to manage that whole portfolio in terms of you know, managing their existing assets and making sure they capture value out of what's been a very important market for them mm -hmm. while at the same time managing these new disruptive products. So basically, do they cannibalize themselves to growth for the growth market? Well, um, because that's what they're holding on to. They're holding on there. So I'm not so much sure if it's cannibalization at the moment as it is making sure they're in place for the future and well, it's future th applications. They're certainly but painting this as incremental, but there's got to be some kind of overlap. Well, there, right? I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, at some point, once you know, um, products like iron-based iron products become you know more mature there becomes overlap, right? Yeah, it becomes well, yeah. very difficult to decide what you sell where. But you want to be in the position to cannibalize your own as opposed to having Better to eat your own dog food, right? Eat your young before someone else does. <laughs> yeah, no, it's All very right. true. It's an exciting, exciting time. I was just saying before, this is uh, one of the most exciting announcements in the server industry in 15 years, right? We really haven't so seen this kind of change. Pretty incremental. Pretty incremental. Kind of boring. I hate to say it. Good it's stuff, though, right? Really did a good job. Yeah, the yeah, the blades were really, great. I mean, the blades hit that, hit that mark, you know, where it's like that glass ceiling. You know, this but the blades door. were kind of cool, right? But yeah, that was... Makes sense. It wasn't really... But I think that was the beginning of what you're saying, this, right? You agree? Or, Absolutely. I mean, this feels like a major, major disruption and, and a big new wave. I mean... Um, we heard this morning, you know, the four big ones, x86, blades, pods, and now this. So mm -hmm. This just feels much, much bigger, in my view anyway, than, than, than blades and pods. Blades, big, you're right, but a lot of packaging. This is just the step function, order of magnitude more exciting. I think so, and I think, um, you know, managing that ecosystem and building it out over time is going to be really critical. And, That's the you know, thing. HP has big pockets to help enable that and for me that's what's really exciting when you see some of the very larger vendors getting involved then you know that the ecosystem around it can begin to develop and um, as a customer you want to make sure you can get service and that you know you're going to know the product's going to be there a couple of yeah. years from now I mean, and you know all those story, kind of things. The energy story and the performance story is just too compelling you just cannot mm -hmm. deny it. Is that the big execution risk in your view? Is the ecosystem and building that out? I mean, there's lots of them, but I mean, I well, undoubtedly. I mean, if you don't get that right, then nothing really and works. And if you do, does that become a sustainable competitive advantage, or are these guys just arms dealers that are going to go wherever the business goes? No pun intended. Well, you know, they're going to have to be careful about how they build that out and make sure that they're not. Um, pushing out other players, right? You want to grow the ecosystem. You want to enable everybody to win there to get some volume behind it. Um, so that's a fine line to play, too. Um, you want to own it, but you don't want to own it so much that nobody else can play there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you see, you know, what VMware, for instance, is Absolutely. doing in its ecosystem. Yep. And it's good to see HP yep. playing that card again, yep. you know, in a fairly big way. Yeah, so. I think so. It's What's your take on um, the disruption to just basic industry metrics. I mean, we heard Paul Moritz at VMworld saying things like virtual machines are out shipping physical servers. Well, that was my data. So your numbers again. <laughs> again. Someone, someone, All uh, numbers go back some, to Someone Michelle. really smart. <laughs> uh, okay. And, and, and so now you have, I mean, how do you count servers? I mean, they got four, yeah. I mean, 280 processors. So you get a collapsing of mm -hmm. it now. Remember in the network things, ports and this and that. I mean, how do you measure market share now when you got freaking 280 servers? Mm, it's a great on question. A for you box. So we're looking at being able to count the number of VMs, which is difficult, of course, because a VM can live and die within the matter of an hour, right? So it's very, very difficult. It becomes a market that isn't static in the way it's been over the last 15 years. Um, so uh, it requires a completely different set of metrics. But what we do look at really now is um, how many VMs does a, an enterprise environment host um, and what's the associated management cost with that? So one of the things you've got to be concerned about with ARM is it proliferates 
and then suddenly you've got this huge management problem on your hands again, right? You've got this, again, new, you know, massive environment that mm-hmm. you haven't probably put in place the right management tools around. Um, so that's a huge concern. And Partha was talking about the ensemble concept where, mm-hmm. you know, bringing in a new management layer, yep. things like that. Embedded within the technology, right, absolutely. So you basically put a frame around the market in a different way and kind of try to market share so when they get into the uh, who owns what market share it's going to be interesting it's a great opportunity to you restate know? numbers this yeah. virtualization <laughs> thing it's, isn't it's it? always a great oh, opportunity okay. new survey <laughs> you know, things change very dramatically you know, the in market the is world. different though you know I think back when I started at IDC almost yeah. 15 years ago and what we had to do then you know, we were just yeah. counting boxes yeah. right when they were coming out the back so of the door easy. How easy it was so that? easy and we thought oh, it was yeah, so bump, hard bump. <laughs> Um, it's very different. Good. And then, of course, you know, you've got server devices that look like storage devices. So, you know, when does it become a server and when's it really a storage and device? Nano store coming around the corner. You got uh, crazy and stuff. And convergence complicates convergence, things. You know, absolutely. We saw that with, with the UCS and the whole war and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's really pretty simple. It's really, you know, what's happening on sort of the maturity of the x86 market and convergence and private clouds, and um, they all really fit on that axis. And then you've got this new axis starting around these new disruptive products. And, um, you know, there'll be different metrics to measure this market. It won't be the way we've measured the old market. The value proposition is compelling. I saw, you know, four servers um, on a small little card. It's pretty That's wild. compelling. It's pretty wild. It's very compelling when you run in these kind of big data things we're doing, like we're doing. Very data driven. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, I just love to have, I, mean, I can have 16 servers. That would, that, that could power our entire site for two years with our big data project. Right. Just, I mean, two little cards. Right. That's, you know, and then they go to scale. They'll look at Facebook and these guys. So, you know, they want cost and they want uh, performance. Everything else well, is Well, you know, throwaway. it's, um, you know, when you're an enterprise customer and you're looking to that next technology, we always find this magic number of 25 or 30 percent. You've got to be saving me at least 25 or 30 percent. 10 percent, it's not worth my while to have to go out and make the change. You know, if you start looking at price differentials of around 50 percent, then it's very hard not to look at that. Yeah, what were the numbers today? Um, no, you know, he said, ten, he said 10 data centers down to a half. Uh, I and mean, you got to look, dig into this, but still, 89 percent less energy. I mean, that, that, that ain't 10 percent. I mean, yeah, I mean, for very large data centers, you know, if you're thinking like a host or someone like that, that's yeah. that's huge. 94% less space and mm-hmm. then 63% less cost. Mm-hmm. I, I presume that number's lower than the others because you still got, you know, operational costs yeah. associated with, you know, people. But, um, that's hard not to take a look at. Yeah, I mean, if you put that in front of a CIO, they're going to go, uh, I'll listen. You know, yeah, you sales reps got, yeah, give me a meeting. No <laughs> problem. Sales. Yeah, I mean, we if can save if you 12 if or 13 particularly, right? well, particularly if it's for newer applications, right? When it's an existing application, you've got all the migration costs and all of the risk that goes along with that, right? Then you've always got to factor that in. When it's for a new application anyway that you're going to build, then it's something you yeah, really I mean, should be Cloudera taking a look at. Yeah, the Cloudera and the Hortonworks, these guys out there punching the big data, their whole pitch is you don't need compute. You get plenty of compute. Your issue is I.O. So That's use true. commodity gear. So this fits right into that wheelhouse because now they have the ability to manage processors up and down and manage the I.O. So I think HP will capture a lot of that, a lot of that business. Well, it was interesting to see Cantor Fitzgerald on the panel mm-hmm. this morning, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you know, of they course. real-time application. I mean, they're... Data yeah, intensive. I thought he did a nice job, too, describing how um, high-frequency trading isn't just one application, right? It's many different kinds of applications within that. And even if it isn't the platform for the entire app, you know, you can carve off pieces of it and, and drive efficiency it, yeah, there. Yeah, it's the, it's the big data piece that's driving their interest in, you know, low lower energy processing. Right. And, uh, and so that's, I mean, it seems to be a, a trait of, of, of this marketplace is that you got maybe a single or maybe a couple of applications that are really driving. Look at Facebook. It's really one app to a yeah. billion people. Yeah, right. it's a very different approach than the classic enterprise. It's yeah, very which, true. As we know, yes. you know our days of application <laughs> right. portfolio. Absolutely. You know, very it's, it's different approach. Hundreds and thousands of apps for yeah. maybe thousands of users. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, if you have that kind of a data center, then you're always looking for the next disruptive thing, right? You have to. I mean, your power and cooling costs are, affect your bottom line. You have to constantly be thinking about that. Data center is an ATM, I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to a cost center. <laughs> okay, I'm it's getting the it. holy grail of <laughs> IT value. Yeah, <laughs> they're printing money and you know, yeah, it's true. It's the that. profit engine. It's absolutely yeah. true. And uh, um, the car was full of crap. IT does matter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out for you though. <laughs> he sold a lot of books. You got a lot so of publicity out of that. 
became wealthy with yeah. a failed premise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it very much. You know, it, it, he, it, it's not so much the IT, it's what you do with it, right? And, um, you know, again, for Canada Fitzgerald, it wasn't so much that they had this really cheap platform they could put in places that, that they could do very different things with a very important application for their company. I mean, that's what's really driving the value well, I think there. that's a really important point. It's, it's what a customer is doing with IT that's more important than the new operating system or even the Absolutely. new chip. You know, that's... The, the, the application is really where the innovation is today. Yeah, I mean, I That's think what he was saying it. was, you know, they had reached a point where they couldn't continue with the existing technology the way it was and make it cost competitive. And so that's why they're constantly looking for something like this, right? Because that drives new business for them. Mm. Very important for them. All right, Michelle. Well, this, listen, really appreciate it. Michelle, you great. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. Thanks. Always thanks. a pleasure. Did great I close knowledge. it up? I know. You're wrapping it up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great guest, as always. We are here at a historic place. Behind us is the offices of the founders of Hewlett Packard here in Building One in Palo Alto, California. We're live. Special coverage of HP's Moonshot, Project Moonshot announcement. Uh, I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching today. And uh, yep. stay tuned. Uh, we'll be at Hadoop World next week. Yep. Uh, look for... Uh, New York City. Yeah, we're in New York City, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Uh, look for the coverage of this event. It'll be up on our sites on Wikibon.org, on SiliconAngle.com. Look for that. It'll be up uh, this evening and all these videos. Videos on SiliconAngle.tv. Yep. And, uh, again, Hadoop World next week should be a big event. We'll be on the ground, uh, Twitter, Facebook, StumbleUpon, Google. Everyone's going to be there. A lot of financial services, a lot of government talking big data. Uh, we'll be have two days of eight hours a day coverage from New York City. So SiliconAngle.tv. So that's a wrap from our special uh, coverage of HP's big moonshot announcement, Game Changing. Thanks for uh, the, the great sound bites from Thanks Michelle Bailey, me. IDC calling it a uh, once-in-a-lifetime uh, generational shift that we're seeing. Bold move, big growth, new, new metrics. Dave, thanks so much. All right. Pleasure, John. That's a wrap. See you soon, everybody.